Hello, welcome back to Tube Talk. Thanks, Dag. We managed to squeeze one in this week, even though we said we might not, because of school holidays. We will produce. We will produce. Premium content. Straight into it? Straight into it. What can you tell us? Quite a big week last week, yes. with some very good placings. Yes. I'd say. Where should we start? With the mighty Adelaide, who ran an amazing first place on Saturday. To win the cup, what a warrior. Fantastic course, it pushed them over $800,000. How much? $800,000. In New Zealand, in New Zealand dollars in prize money. Yeah, he's just a marvel. And uh, well deserved win, uh, another cup. He's eight, he's one of our European imports, which we've had enormous success with. Him, Rakik's closing on four, I think he's won 400,000 Rakik New Zealand dollars. Sir Pippin, 330,000. Skyman's won two from four. Luberas, one in Sydney, you know, they're just, they're such good horses, we've had such great success. We'll be heading there at the end of the, this month again, we'll be buying some more. More horses, more wins. More horses, more wins. If they're from Europe. Anyway, um, we also have Make Time New Wine at Ellerslie. Oh, one thing I was going to say is he'll probably run the $200,000 Port Macquarie Cup next, so he's getting close to a million dollars in prize money. Yes, and make, make time, yeah, make time. Um, really good winner at Ellerslie. Uh, Led, kicked away, won very, very easily. He is a good horse. He's going to keep winning races. He's going to keep going through the grades. He's an exciting horse. It was a great one. Yes, and then on Wednesday, we had Waimoku Falls for an exciting first place. It was. And she was on debut. She was. And the whole family was there to watch it. whole family was there. Doug, Melissa, Sophie, Kate, me. Last time the whole family was there to watch the debut, the horse was Rude Awakening. Rude Awakening, that was it. Yeah, to watch the debut win. So that was great. Very, very exciting filly. Lot to learn. She's heading towards a thousand guineas um, and has a massive future. And also, a little side note, we betted $50 on the horse and it won and we got $165 in return. We did. So it was very exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, of which uh, you had five dollars. No, and um, oh, no, nice. gonna, Albert is going to pay me fifty bucks after this for my huge contribution. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also had Lord Ardmore at Taranga, who ran an unlucky and good third. Yeah, he was fresh up. He just got held in for about two hundred metres, the top of the straight from competitive riding. Once he got out, he dashed. He's a very good horse, a very good three-year-old. Uh, he's in the 2000 guineas, he could get there, but he's he is definitely a horse for three year old feature races and will be very hard to beat next start. And finally, over to Australia, we had Secret, Secret Suite who ran second. Yeah, really good second because he's really looking for a mile and further. We had to drop him back to 1400. He was ridden upside down, he was only just beaten by the hot favourite that had the run of the race and saved a lot of ground. So he's going well, and I think. Once he breaks through, I think he'll get up to 2,000 metres and he'll keep winning. I think he's a, as he matures, he just keeps getting better. Now moving on to this week. On Friday at Tirapa, we have three horses. First one in race one being a tissue. Very good horse, a lot of class, heading to the 1,000 guineas, possibly the 2,000 guineas. She's fresh up after a little break. 1,200 metres is too short, but she'll be roaring home, hitting the line hard. And race three, we have Rip em Up. Uh, step up to 2100 metres really suits, she's got a good barrier draw, the better track condition suit, she'll be well over the odds, she's worth a nice each way bet, she can turn her form around. And race 5 we have GC. Uh, very very good 3 year old heading towards 2000 guineas, he's second up, 1400 metres suits, bad draw, he'll get back <clears throat> and running, he'll need a bit of luck but if he gets that luck he can win. And at Mooney Valley race 7 we have Wairiri Falls. Yeah, over 2,000 metres, fifth on the ballot, outside barrier draw, unlikely to get a start. And moving on to Saturday, at Hawke's Bay, race five, we have Reposa Repeater. Uh, drawn barrier 14, fresh up over 1,200 metres, and likely to be scratched and go to Matter Matter next week for a similar race. At Rickerton, race four, we have a major issue. Yeah, so major issue, like her, we've given her a couple of trials, uh, barrier four, Kosia Sano off on claiming one kilo. She'll get a lovely run, um, and uh, she's a definite top three chance for a shot. We'll improve with this run, but a definite top three chance. Mm -hmm. And race 12, we have Aristotle. Uh, yeah, poor ride for a shot, terrible ride, gave him 
really, really hard run. So I was, wasn't very happy with that. Corey Campbell back on, who's one on him, knows him well. Awkward barrier draw of 10. I think we've just got to get across, across get cover, get him nice and relaxed. And if we do that, he can hit the line well. He'll be better for this run as well. It's almost like another fresh up run for him because he was ridden so badly first up. Was that the jockey's fault? Or yeah. Yeah. Bad jockey. That was a bad ride. Not a bad jockey, but a bad ride. Mm. That happens from time to time. And at Australia, Eagle Farm Race 2, we have Stardo. Going super, super well. 2,400 metres, unfortunately outside barrier. I think he's coming to 9 and 9 with one scratching. He's not really a leader, um, but I think we're probably going to have to push forward and then hopefully try and get some cover with him. He's got a big weight to carry, but he's certainly capable of winning this race. And at, at Ramwick, we have Miss Sentimental. The Group 1 Metropolitan, really excited to see her run here. Uh, her first two runs have been in set weights and weight for age races, which haven't suited. She drop, goes to a handicap, she drops to 50 kilos. Uh, she gets up to 2400 metres for the first time since she won the New Zealand Oaks. Um, those things are really in her favour and her ch in training she's improved throughout this week. A couple of things against her, bad barrier draw 17 she's into now, so she's going to have to get back uh, and relax, so hopefully there's good speed on. Um, and still would love to see some rain for him, I'm not going to get it, it's going to be a firm track. But I can see her running a much, much better race this, this Saturday. And moving on to Sunday, at LZ Race 8, we have Shabuya Cosseton. Yeah, uh, won a trial very easily, is, can win first up, so we're just trying to find a race for her because she keeps drawing the car park. She's got an awkward draw again on Sunday of Barrier 9. It's awkward because Ellerslie, the rail's out 9.5 metres, and when it's out that far at Ellerslie, you either have to have blistering gate speed to lead or you have to be able to have a good draw to get handy because nothing tends to come from behind. And she doesn't have blistering gate speed, but she has got ability. So she's probably from Barrier 9 makes it difficult. So she's double nominated for Avondale next Wednesday, and when those draws come out, we'll just decide where she runs. But she... She's ready to win or go very close when she kicks off her campaign. At LZ Race 9, we have Deals Done and She's Apples. But Yeah, so uh, She's Apples, Barry 11, unlike to start for the same reason we just spoke about Shibuya. Um, but she's going really well, a first and a fourth. She's likely going to Madam Anna next Saturday where there's a nice race for her and she's won there before. Uh, deals Done, Barrier 2. He's had two trials coming in. First trial, just ignore that he got a big clod in the face second trial was a nice trial lovely trial feels good from barrier two he can sit up handy um, he'll be well over the odds he's got good ability and he can be in the finish will improve no matter what he does and la and then moving on to bit of the week actually last week our horse surprisingly won what do you mean surprisingly what are you saying about my bit of the week i don't know because your bit of the week usually lose well, don't get um, podium finishes. People got them at up to $14, fixed odds. It's a great pick. Yeah, but they want the teacher back. I know. I've had lots of people say bring back the teacher. So we'll have to get Mr McKinley back, maybe, <laughs> uh, when the school holidays are over. But anyway, Doug, what's our bit of the week this week? On Saturday at Hastings, race two, we have Fighting Fire. Yeah, Stephen Marsh's horse, Danielle Johnson on. I think it's found a great race. It's a maiden, uh, special conditions maiden, 58 kilos. I think there's a long tail to this race. I think there's probably two or three, four chances of which he's won. I think he was very, very good winning his maiden at Taupo. I don't think this race is much stronger at all. Barry eight's a bit, bit awkward, but I think $3.70 is fantastic money. I thought he'd start a favorite at about two fifteen. he hasn't. So, fighting fire is our bit of the week. And that concludes Chew Talk. Thanks, Doug, and we'll see everyone next week. Bye. As to as Jackal Bomb in front of those, they're all sweeping around them wide out here, including Pin Me Down, and behind those runners, then beyond the fort, switching back to the rail. They straighten up in the oaks, and here, pull your socks up. Out wide, Queen of Diamonds went to them. Rubira is getting through as well. Beyond the fort, over on the inside, and wider out, Stark Karen starting to put in with a run. Sentimental Mist is starting to get through. Queen of Diamonds, Stark Karen, Sentimental Mist, beyond the fort, up against the inside. 100 to go, sentimental miss, start carrying.